The commanding lead in the polls, the United Conservative Party of Alberta members met over the weekend to plot policy and what they hope will be a takedown of the NDP government of Rachel Notley next year. Controversial ideas were discussed and endorsed, including a call to alert parents when their children join gay straight alliance clubs in their schools. But leader Jason Kenney insists he's the final authority on what goes into the UPC platform. And Jason Kenney is visiting Ottawa today to talk carbon taxation and other issues, and he joins me in the studio. Welcome, nice to have you back, Jason Good Kenney. To be here, Don. Uh, you were very clear wrapping up the convention yesterday. You hold the pen on policy on this uh, um, on this particular issue on the Gay Straight Alliance. Uh, how how much distance do you need on that one? How, do, 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 does the United Conservative Party need? to push social conservatism to the side a bit more. No, we're a Big Ten coalition, and we have people with uh, different views on different questions. That, and quite deliberately, we're trying to create a, um, a coalition of people who broadly agree on the same themes, and that's focused around economic growth, job creation, fighting for Alberta and our resource industries. Uh, on questions like this, look, what our members were trying to tell us is uh, the importance of parental authority and responsibility. And uh, that um, when it comes to example, uh, in content in the schools, content on religion or, or human sexuality that parents should generally be aware and that's what actually our, our school act has always said in Alberta. At the same time I've said if kids join a peer group like a gay straight alliance just to get emotional or other support there's no need for mandatory notification any more than joining the chess club. So uh, we're not going to put mandatory notification in our platform or our government policy. Uh, most people don't live at the polarized edge of these kinds of issues. Most mm -hmm. people have uh, nuanced views and uh, we respect that. I'm curious though, um, it was a vote at the convention floor that to support the idea that parents be notified, but, and you'd always said, you know, you had a grassroots policy guarantee that members were in charge of policy. Now you're saying you're not gonna do what the policy convention told you to do. Who's in charge? Well, I'm the leader and I'm in charge and I, I was elected as leader with a guarantee for grassroots to develop party policy, but the fifth point in that process I outlined was the leader appointing a platform committee that would consult broadly with Albertans outside the party, because we have to govern, we will have to govern for all Albertans, not just Conservative Party members. So it's always been clear at the end of the day, the leader's got to make the, the tough call about what is in our platform, our blueprint for government. It has to be balanced, it has to be able to get majority of Albertans to vote for it, and, and, and that's what it will be. So we take general direction from the membership, but ultimately I'll be holding the pen on our platform. And you need to moderate in your view. You can't just take everything the policy It was never the says. idea that we would just uh, uh, cut and paste okay. resolutions into a platform. And frankly, this one resolution you're talking about was very badly worded. It's created a lot of confusion and I think unnecessary anxiety. Bottom line is, um, we, are, we do not believe in mandatory notification of parents for extracurricular activities and peer groups. Okay. I want to move on because you got, you know, you, they had, you had them on their feet talking about uh, declaring war against the green left. Who, who are they? I mean, don't you have an environmental agenda? Isn't there a green right that you could balance that with? Well, we conservatives believe in conservation and we will have a very real environmental policy in our platform which will include uh, concrete things to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, but what I'm talking about, Don, are these groups that have for over a decade run a well-funded campaign to defame Canada's energy industry with the specific goal of landlocking Canada's oil and gas, third largest reserves in the world. But they never go, as I said, they never go after the Russian, Saudi, Iranian, Venezuelan oil. And here's the problem. Uh, the International Energy Agency says there will be a growing global demand for oil and gas through 2045. That demand will be met. If Canada isn't part of the supply, it means we will be abandoning global energy markets to some of the world's worst regimes, the OPEC dictatorships and Putin's Russia. And I'm simply saying that doesn't help the environment. It hurts human rights and global stability. So that's the green left I'm talking about. It's these groups that have had a single-minded obsession with shutting down Canada's energy industry, which has been a key engine of our prosperity. Why? Because they think we're the Boy Scouts. And I'm simply saying, if I'm Premier, those days are over. 
I do have to ask you, Trans Mountain the deadline's approaching very quickly, less than four weeks now. Do you believe Trudeau can do something in good faith by negotiating with Kinder Morgan? Have you given up on the federal government already? Well, I can only judge Trudeau by his actions. He vetoed the Northern Gateway Pipeline that had been approved. He killed mm -hmm. Energy East through the National Energy Board getting into carbon right. emissions up and downstream. He surrendered to Obama's veto on, Northern, uh, sorry, on Keystone XL and has done absolutely nothing to get BC to respect the Constitution and federal jurisdiction on, on building Trans Mountain. Why did he send them, uh, sign an agreement to give them $4 billion in discretionary infrastructure transfers okay. three weeks ago? He's negotiating now to give them a billion dollars in job training funds. Why not hold back those checks until John Horgan agrees to respect the Constitution? So I don't think he's very serious about this. And Kinder Morgan has said, they said two weeks ago, that nothing has changed, they, that, that this project looks like it may be untenable because of the lack of certainty in BC. Okay, a work in progress. I guess we'll find out in the next three or four weeks. Jason Kenny, uh, congratulations on the convention. Thank, Thank you. you for coming by. Appreciate Cheers. this. Thank you.